digging a hole. That should be pretty obvious, but what I'm digging it for is kind of an interesting idea. I want to build, or at least rig up to see if it'll actually work, um, a vertical chainsaw mill, and uh, it needs to run on a post that's going to be in the ground here. So I need to dig down uh, around three feet so that I can anchor the post well into the ground so it will stand up straight. sure one or two of you will be compelled <laughs> to point out that there is a, a tool called a post hole shovel which I don't have and I really don't need because I don't dig that many holes and this is the exception and the digging is pretty easy here it's all sand down underneath here uh, really fine almost masonry grade sand with very few rocks this thing needs to be plumb straight up and down but I want to get a little bit backfilled on the bottom first going to check it to see how plumb it is. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be close. And then I'm going to take my sledgehammer here and pack the dirt down around it. Make sure that it's nice and tight and it doesn't move. Some of you will probably say, well, why don't you use concrete? Well, this is just a temporary thing. I want to check it to make sure that it actually works. And if it doesn't, I want to be able to get this post back out and reuse it for something else. And having concrete around it will make that difficult. Also, concrete, well, then I have to smash the concrete off and get rid of that too. Besides that, the dirt will do a good enough job of holding this in and keeping it steady. So I've got the post set. That's all ready. I've got my saw here saw that I bought especially for this by the way so if you're wondering what I spend my money on it's stuff like that um, I've already put together this bracket from plywood three quarter inch on the bottom half inch on the side and what that will do is it will hold the saw I've already made some marks on here because I took this straight edge and I lined it up with this side so that the bar is more or less in line with this face here. It really doesn't have to be perfect, but close is good. So that positions the saw on this. This will attach to the post with these pieces of plywood, which I'm going to uh, arrange in a box. And I'll just drill pilot holes and dry screws in to hold those in. Okay, now I can try it just to see if it actually fits, which is important. And uh, <laughs> it does, but it's a bit too snug. What happens is the ends of these posts dry quicker than the middle, and it's um, the right size on the end, but as you go a little bit further down, the post swells out and it becomes tight. So. I got an easy fix to that though. Okay, the first thing I did was take the back cover off again and I spread these out a little bit further just by loosening the screws, pushing them over and retightening the screws. And this is the spacer that I used originally to put in there and you can see I've got a little bit of space there now. So before I put the back cover back on again, I'm just going to space it out away from that with washers in behind where the screws go.
Okay, we'll try again. And that's perfect, actually. Slides smoothly. There's enough play there so that it won't get jammed up. It should be okay. Basically, everything on this uh, is plastic, even this thing, I think. Uh, it's at least coated in plastic. I'm going to secure the saw to this thing with screws. And the first one's going to go in up here. It's going to drill in on an angle through the plywood and into the handle. I guess the only thing left to do is to try it out. Oh, I've got this smaller one here. I don't know, it's about eight inches through. Okay, I've got this other piece of log that I cut earlier as a base and I've got this one standing up so that it's more or less, you know, centered on that. Now my saw cuts two inches outside of that. Now what I'm looking to do with this is not to do the full, you know, milling operation. What I really want to be able to do is just flatten one side so that I can bring it in and cut, do the rest of the cutting on my bandsaw, my big bandsaw. Put a really coarse blade on there and then do that. So only really looking for one cut. I think I'll actually move it out a little bit further so that I'll be closer to the center. Okay, the last thing that I need happening here is for this to move while it's cutting, so it has to be secured. I'm just going to drive screws in through the log and into the base here, and I'm just going to make sure that they're in a spot that's away from where the thing's going to be cutting. Cutting through a screw with the chainsaw wouldn't be good. Okay, I've also got the brace at the top and I've already attached it to a log that's sitting on the ground heavy enough to stop it from going. And I'll just screw this in here. And it probably won't make that much of a difference, so I'm going to brace it this way as well. Keep it from moving in that direction. My original idea is to start the saw, uh, lock the trigger, and let it cut down through uh, on its own without any uh, input from me. I'll just stand back and watch it type thing. But since I haven't tried this yet, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the saw and I'm gonna have my hand here on the trigger just to make sure that if anything goes wrong, I can let up on the gas. And besides that, they've got a little cap in here covering over the hole where the locking stud would normally be. I guess that's a safety feature for these saws. So I'd have to rig up something else to lock the trigger for it to run automatically anyway. Okay, it looks like what happened is the uh, thing on the front here hit the block and it stopped, so that's as deep as it can cut. Um, I really should position the block a little further out and that would make it cut all the way through. I think that I can just split that by hand the rest of the way, maybe. <laughs> yep. And wow, that's pretty straight actually, and pretty smooth <laughs> for a chainsaw, not bad. OK, 
Yeah, I got the bottom cleaned up so that I can run it through the bandsaw without that hanging up on it. The chainsaw was cutting through seven inches of hard maple and it went through it like that. Now that's a brand new uh, chain on there, still a sharp, you know, factory sharp. So it's got that going for it. Also, that's a fairly powerful saw. I'm not sure what it was. Anyways, more than powerful enough to whip through this 18 inch bar on it. So I can probably cut pieces that are quite a lot thicker. As you could hear, as it's going through, it never really did bog down. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll bring these in, cut them on the bandsaw into boards that are roughly one inch thick. Uh, I'll cut them perpendicular to this face here so that they're quarter cut, which makes for more stability. Also, I really don't need wide boards that much. So the smaller ones or the narrower ones will work for me. Anyway, uh, Hope you enjoyed it. I know that this seems like it's a lot more work than say setting up an Alaskan mill, but when you have this thing set up, I don't think it will be because, okay, the work was to put the post in, now that's in, I don't have to worry about that. More work to rig up the uh, carriage that the saw slides up and down on, that's done. Also, the base couldn't be simpler. It's just a piece of wood that's sitting right there. The procedure to brace it up, there's nothing to it. I mean, there's just sticks that go down to hold it in place. And it worked great. With a very little effort on my part to hold the saw. I don't think I'd actually make it run automatic. It seems to work just fine. I mean, I'm just holding the trigger. I'm not actually pushing down. It's just the weight of the saw and the carriage that's doing all the cutting. Thank you.